Hi, welcome to my video. Now in this video, we're gonna start a new chapter or a new concept which is called electrodynamics, okay? Now, this is what you call this chapter, it's called electrodynamics, okay? This is a new concept here in grade 12. Mm -hmm. But now remember, in grade 11, you have learned a concept which is called electromagnetism. So the very same basics that you have learned in grade 11 from electromagnetism are highly applicable in this concept, which is called electrodynamics. Now here in electrodynamics, we are most definitely going to talk about the two devices. We're going to talk about the generator, and we are also going to talk about the motor, okay? How these two devices actually operates. Now, these two devices, they operate on basis that you have learned in Greek living from electromagnetism. Now, let me refresh you to remind you what did you learn in Greek living in terms of electromagnetism. Now, what you see here on sketch number one, you see two bars of magnets. The other one is named south, and the other one is made north. It's, it's, it's named north. Now, this is what you know about the magnets. The magnets has what we call the imaginary field lines. And these field lines, they always move from the north pole to the south pole. These are the field lines denoted by letter B. Now, these field lines, they are imaginary, and you cannot see them. Now, this material that you see over here, it is a material in which, in this case, it is a good conductor of electricity, meaning this, it's a current carrying conductor. So this current carrying conductor, it will be suspended within this region of magnetic field. Now, the rotation of this conductor you will see there is a specific, you know, there is a specific rotation that we are actually going to talk about. You can see that this guy over here, he or she is holding this current carrying conductor and he is flipping this current carrying conductor upwards because you can see with this force that this current carrying conductor is moving upwards. So the rotation of this current carrying conductor within this region of magnetic field, there will be an induction of EMF in this coil. And the induction of EMF in this coil, coil will result into a current flowing in this coil. So this concept that you see over here, it is called, it is called electromagnetic induction. And this concept was introduced by one of our great grandfather, Michael Faraday. Okay, remember we have learned about this guy in grade, 11 okay so now this is how the whole process actually works so these sketches they show different motions of a current carrying conductor if a certain motion will be enabled to produce a current in it or not <clears throat> like here sketch number one we can see that this guy will try to flip this coil upwards and therefore here is a device that measures, it could be galvanometer, it could be ammeter, it could be voltmeter, it doesn't matter, as long as it is a device that can read one of those parameters, current or voltage in this circuit. Let's assume this is galvanometer. So when this guy um, apply a force in a rotational motion, uh, taking this coil this side, moving it upwards, uh, this galvanometer will start to deflect to indicate that there is a current or there is a voltage moving in this current carrying conductor. And when you have a look at sketch number two, sketch number two, we can see that this guy is rotating um, this current carrying conductor in a force that is directed downwards within this region of magnetic field. And at the very same time, the very same galvanometer will start to deflect in different direction compared to here. So the deflection of this galvanometer, it indicates that there is a current moving in this current carrying conductor. But when you have a look at sketch number three, we see that this guy, 
He's just only placing this current carrying conductor within this region of the magnetic field. This current carrying conductor, it is simply suspended without any motion. In that case, your galvanometer will stick at zero. So that means there is no current that will flow in this current carrying conductor. And the last sketch, we can see that he is actually moving this current carrying conductor. <clears throat> he is actually applying a force or moving this current carrying conductor within the region of magnetic field. But you see the motion is horizontal, okay, which could be left, right, left, right, left, right. But still, the galvanometer will, uh, will remain at zero, meaning there is no current or EMF induced in this current carrying conductor. So that means this is not a proper way to generate electricity in a current carrying conductor. This is not even, a, there is no even a motion. There is, this is not a proper way to generate the electricity in a current carrying conductor. These are two proper ways to induce EMF in a current carrying conductor. Now here in electrodynamics, we're gonna use this concept once more again to generate electricity when we are studying the generators, okay? Because you know that the generators are the devices that can actually generate um, EMF or a current in a current carrying conductor. So generator, it simply works in this principle. And this is how a coil within magnetic field supposed to be moved, okay? Again, what you see over here, we have a Fleming's right hand rule, or you can say Fleming's right hand dynamo rule. So this rule, it helps us to determine the direction of these three parameters, the current, the magnetic field, and the force of the coil, okay? So because we use the right hand rule, your fingers, the middle finger, represent the direction of the current, the index finger represent the direction of the magnetic field, and the thumb represent the direction of the force. By the end of this video, I will be doing um, the directions. I'll be teaching you on how to determine the directions of these three parameters when applying the very same concept, since we're gonna start talking about the generators. And later on, or next session, we're gonna discuss the motors, okay? All right. Right, so now what you see here, it's a generator, okay? This is a generator or this is a sample or a simple way on how a generator, it is actually working. So a generator, we say it is a device that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. When I talk about this mechanical energy, actually I'm referring to a rotational energy, okay? This rotational energy in the magnetic field, remember? In the previous slide, we've just discussed on how to generate electricity using um, a coil and a bar of magnet, bars of magnets. So this uh, mechanical energy will be converted into electrical energy. And therefore, this is what we know. This is the function of the generator to form electricity. Okay. So now there are two types of generators that we're going to look on to. We're going to talk about the AC generator. We are also going to talk about the DC generator. An AC generator, it's an alternating current generator, whereby it's a type of a generator where the current that will be produced will change the direction. I'll show you when I do the AC cycles. And in the DC generator, it's a type of a generator whereby this is a direct current generator. So whereby the 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 the, the current um, induced will be moving in the same direction in one direction it's directly moving in one direction we'll also look onto it when we do the dc cycle okay so now let's talk about this a simple schematic diagram of a generator okay you can also make your own generator you don't need complex stuff to um make your own generator. All you need is a bar of magnet, your coil, and your force. That's it. You can make electricity. It's so weird. So now, <clears throat> AC generator, what you see here on this sketch, we have two bars of magnets. And then we have the coil. You can see that we have the handle over here, okay? Now, this handle, 
it is linked to um, isolated axis of this coil, okay? So this isolated axis of this coil, it actually helps us for a rotational force and then handle as well. And therefore we have these two rings that are brown, call them S2 and S1. These two rings are called the slip rings, okay? These two rings over here are called the slip rings, S1 and S2. We just naming them, okay? And therefore, what you see over here, it's a coil, which is a current carrying conductor connected to this slip ring. You can see the end of this current carrying conductor is most definitely connected to this slip ring. And this end of the current carrying conductor, it is also connected to this slip ring over here. Okay, over there. And therefore, we have these uh, blue colors, these blue objects. It's B1 and B2. We call them the carbon brushes. Sometimes these carbon brushes, these brushes are not only made up of carbon. They can also be composed of uh, copper. Okay, copper. So one of the reasons why are they made up of carbon and what, then why do you call them the carbon brushes or the copper brushes? Is because carbon and copper, they are good conductor of electricity. They can conduct electricity. Like for example, we know that graphite, graphite, it's a carbon, okay? Um, the pencil um, thing inside of the pencil, it is, um, it, is, it is made up of graphite, which is a good conductor of electricity, which is a carbon substance, <clears throat> okay? All right. So, and then here we have the external circuit, okay? The external circuit connected to the generator. This is a generator and this is the circuit, the circuit that is outside of the generator, meaning this generator will supply this circuit with um, a current so that this bulb can what? Can glow, okay? <clears throat> right, so like I said, S1 and S2, we call them the slip, the slip ring the slip rings, okay? So what is the function of these two slip rings? What are, what, what are the importance of these two slip rings? I mean, like, they transmit electricity into a coil, okay? That's what they do. So that means <clears throat> these slip rings are there for transmission of electricity all the times. That's what you need to know, okay? They transmit um, the electricity into this coil. And therefore, the carbon brushes, we say they divert current, okay? Because now this is what is happening. This current that is going to be produced out of this generator, they're supposed to go through the carbon brushes into the external circuit. So these carbon brushes are actually there to divert the current. And then this alphabet here, which is A, it only represents this line over here, which is isolated axis, okay? This isolated axis along with the handle, it helps for the rotation of the coil in the circuit, okay? That's just how it works. There's nothing major about this. All you have to know is that when the coil, it is in this magnetic field and is rotated, rotated, um, current will be induced, but I'll explain much more better when I get into the next slide, which is this slide. Actually, this is what I wanted to talk about. This is what I wanted to explain, okay? But at the same time, I'll explain this in an AC cycle. So this is an AC cycle, like an AC generator. This is how an AC generator works. So why do we call this an AC cycle? As mathematics students, because you can't do physics without meds, we know that to have a complete cycle within a period of 360 degrees, this is like a sine graph, it's a sinusoid, okay? It's a one complete wavelength. One complete wavelength, <clears throat> it shows a cycle, it shows one complete revolution or one complete rotation, okay? So now, this is how an AC current actually works. Remember, what did I say to you? I said AC current works in different, directs in different directions, okay? Two directions. So we have the positive direction, and then we have the negative direction. So now this is what is happening. Remember, each and every time when you discuss these things, think of two bars of magnets. Maybe it's south, maybe it's north, I don't know. And then here we have a coil. Each and every time, think about this concept, okay? Think about this picture. So now here we have a coil. 
which is vertical, which is in a vertical position, okay? So when you're calling, it is in vertical position. What will be the current? But remember, you have to understand this process from this point to that point, it's one complete wavelength. It's one rotation, okay? It's when you rotate your coil once. So in this position, your coil, it is placed vertically. So when the moment, because you have to understand this thing is fast, right? You don't just do it slow and expect to have current. You have to have emotion. But now we're going to slow things up so that we can study inside actually what is taking place i mean like we stop we slowing things here so that we can see what is actually taking place so when the coil attains this position whereby it's vertical the current the emf in it is zero okay but when the coil changes position from this point to that point remember we have this and then the coil it is most definitely rotating within this two bars of magnets the coil is rotating now it is in this position which is this and then when the coil gets about this position we are increasing magnetic field through the surface of the coil we're talking about a change in magnetic field through the surface of the coil so when the coil changes the position from here to here to vertical from vertical position to horizontal position what is happening the induced EMF starts to increase, right? And then when the coil reaches the horizontal position, here, when the coil reaches the horizontal position, now we have the maximum current in this coil. We have the maximum uh, EMF in this coil, okay? And then again, when this coil again rotates, right? When this coil from this position to that position, when this coil again rotates to a different vertical position, the current starts to drop and then it gets to zero the emf right which also corresponds with current as well the emf starts to drop to zero and then from this vertical position to another rotation to get into this position a new different because this is what i want you to see do you see the side a b meaning it's gonna rotate in this way it's now it is downwards now the very same a b it's gonna rotate in this way now here it is to this vertical position the very same a b will further rotate to this direction and then the further will the, the, the very same side which is a b will once more again rotate to the original position at which it has started with it's one rotation okay so in this position vertical position just know that in the vertical positions, in the vertical positions, our what? Our EMF is zero. There is no induction of EMF in this coil. But when the position, it, it gets uh, horizontal, horizontal, our EMF is at maximum. Now, this is what is happening. Like I said, this is an AC cycle. Here we have the positive direction and then here we have the negative direction. This positive and negative we only show or indicate the direction of the current, okay? This is uh, the, whereby the current will be moving from D to C at some point after rotation move from C to D. So this is just a change of the direction of the current or EMF induced in a coil. Now, here we have the DC generator, okay? So here we are talking about a direct, okay? Talking about a direct current. Now, when you talk about direct current, we have two bars of magnets. We have the coil suspended in the magnet. And then we have the rotation of the coil, most definitely, to induce current in this um, coil so that this current can power up our bulb over here. Okay? Now, this is what is happening. Let's name everything. It's coil, C, bars of magnets. Um, we have now... In DC generator, we no longer, meaning the slip rings are going to be replaced by split ring commutator. We only have one split. It has a gap. Okay, that's why it's a split, split ring commutator. So DC generator has only split ring commutator. Okay, and then it has, again, two carbon brushes which are joined to the external circuit, okay? And then we have the bulb over there. So in this case, what does the slip ring commutator do? 
it makes sure that the current going through carbon brushes is in one direction okay that's what the split ring does that's why here it is a split because it makes sure that or it ensures that the current moving through the carbon brushes is in one direction okay so this is the difference between the generate the ac and dc they here we have one direction and there we have two directions and so i was showing you in this graph that here we have the positive and the negative okay we have two directions over here can you see that all right now now i want to exit this So then the carbon brushes does the very same function that we have just spoke about, talk about. So there is nothing major about this. Now let's talk about the DC cycle. Okay. So, so the DC cycle, like I said, it has only one direction. You can see that the current is moving only in positive direction, not positive and negative direction. Okay. But again, you have to understand this is one rotation, it's one revolution, it's one complete cycle. So once more, again, remember when your coil is in vertical position, okay? But remember, the coil is what you call the normal. The normal will act perpendicular to the surface of the coil. The normal, it is horizontal, but the coil, it is vertical to the magnetic field. So now here we have uh, the coil in vertical position and we can see that the EMF induced in the coil is going to be zero, it's going to be zero, it's going to be zero. But when the coil gets into a vertical position, now we have the maximum current. Now we have the maximum current, okay? Again, you can see that from this diagram, our current, it is most definitely moving in one direction because of that split in commutator. Okay, so this is what is basically taking place over here. Okay, all right. So now these are the uses of AC and DC generators. We use the AC for construction sites. We know that um, if there is a construction taking place, we need supply of electricity for some other appliances that use electricity. So we use them in construction sites. In the amusement parks, we know that amusement parks, there are certain machines that need electricity. So they use these huge giant antique um, generators to uh, power up their machines um, by using a fuel. And therefore, they are also used at the hospitals, they are used at um, stores, you know, when you go to the town during harsh times of load shading here in South Africa to power up um, their machines so that their businesses can be functional. They use the AC generators. So there are many uses of AC generators. And in the DC generator, you most definitely want to understand the difference between this and that since right here we are talking about a direct current. So here we're talking about a di uh, bicycle dynamo. I don't know if you've realized that bicycle has a bulb, a small area and a bulb there. The thing is when you ride your bicycle, you, you use your pedals, right? You use your pedals and then you move your bicycle by using your pedals. So when you use those pedals, those pedals, they actually cause a rotation in that light bulb. There is a mini magnetic bus. There is a mini magnetic bus and um, coil. So when you rotate um, that, main, uh, that uh, coil within the bus of magnet, think of this, okay, think of this. And then you have a coil. So when you rotate this coil by doing what? By paddling your bicycle. When you pedal in your bicycle, this coil will rotate and there is a bar of magnets. Therefore, this coil will have what? Will have current in it and this current will power up the bulb. Okay, that's how it works. It uses this concept of generator by this type. This generator over here, it has the split rings, obviously. It has uh, the split rings, commutator, whereby they will give <clears throat> this type of current. Uh, that will be used in a bicycle dynamo and therefore the dynamo flashlight. I don't know if you've seen this kind of lights. I mean, like it's a torch, right? It's a torch and therefore it has a handle over here. So if you want this torch to light during the night, what you do is you rotate this handle 
like it makes this sound you know so when you rotate this um um handle there is generator inside there is a mini generator inside of this type of generator is dc most definitely split the rings commutator and think of this bars of magnets the coil and then the rotation will what will yield mechanical energy will be converted into electrical energy and therefore will power up this light bulb and then this light bulb will flow so that's how dynamo flash light actually works okay and therefore for now we are done and then i'm going to show you this video on how to determine the direction of um, of these three parameters, current, magnetic field, and um, force of a coil. Okay, I want it, it to be practical so that you can see and understand how does it actually works. So let's have a look at this video. Hi, now in this diagram, we are going to use the right hand rule to explain the direction of the current, to explain the direction of the magnetic field, to explain the direction of the coil, okay? So remember, we're gonna use the left hand side, okay? So now make sure that all of these fingers, they stay or they remain perpendicular to one another. We have the index finger, we have the middle finger, and then we have the thumb, okay? So now remember the thumb, it represents the thumb, it represents the direction of the coil. And then the index finger, it represents the direction of the magnetic field. And the middle finger represents the direction of the current, okay? So now what you see here on the diagram, it is a diagram of a generator, whereby we have two bars of magnets. We have the North Pole, and then we have the South Pole. And on top of that, what you see over here in the middle between these two bars of magnets, this is a coil, okay? It is a coil, and we know that coil, it is a current carrying conductor. So now this is what is basically taking place. We're going to learn how the current moves in this coil. We're going to learn about the direction of the magnetic field, and which we know that magnetic field will move from North Pole to the South Pole. And we are also going to talk about the rotation of the coil, whether this coil will be rotating clockwise or will be rotating anti-clockwise. Now let us start using the right hand rule. So now this is what you see on the diagram, okay? I'm going to use my fingers, okay? Gonna use my fingers, so this is a little bit practical, and so I am doing this video. So now this is what is happening. Um, from north to south, we are talking about the magnetic field, right? Remember, your index finger will represent the direction of the magnetic field. Okay. So now this is where. Uh, let me come this side. So now this is where your index finger will point. Okay, your index finger will point north to south, right? Your index finger. And therefore, now we want to talk about the direction of the current. Now, as you see on this diagram, your current it is actually moving from A to B. Each and every time when you want to figure out the directions, only focus only on one side. You can either focus on this side of CD or you can focus on this side of AB. Even if an exam is not given to you that this side is AB, just write with your pencil that this side it is AP. So now let's focus on side AP, okay, from north to south. This is our index finger. And therefore, the current it is actually moving downwards. So this is what I normally say. When the current is moving downwards on this page, meaning it's moving towards you, Okay, but when the current is moving from B to A, I'm gonna say the current is moving away from you. So now in this case, the current is moving to you, right? Remember, you are the one who is sitting on your question on your table, looking your question paper like this. So that means this middle finger is supposed to point to you, supposed to point your um supposed to point your your chest. Okay, so that means uh your index finger will point from north to south and your middle finger will point towards you on your chest right right so that means we need to figure out the direction of the coil whether the coil will move clockwise or anti-clockwise so now remember the most important thing is this fingers supposed to be placed perpendicular to one another so that means if i want to unfold this third finger which is the uh, thumb finger, it will move or it will point upwards, okay? So that means in this case, remember this is you sitting on your table looking your question paper in this direction. So that means you are pointing your chest, you are pointing from north to south, 
and you are also pointing upwards and you are only focused on side a b so what does that mean that means the coin will move upwards so how will the coin move upwards look like literally your uh, your thumb it is pointing upwards right so that means side a b will start to move or will start to rotate upwards and therefore oh yes this side which is side cd will go downwards okay so when a b goes upwards and cd goes downwards we are talking about what type of rotation this is a clockwise rotation in a form of clock okay that's how we describe uh, the directions using the right hand rule Right. So in this video, I was simply explaining um, how does actually, how do we figure um, the directions, okay? That's how we figure the directions of uh, these three parameters that I have just talked about using the right hand rule. It's Fleming's right hand rule, okay? So now I did another video where um, the diagram, the setup of diagram is a little bit different from the one that I've just explained over here. Now let's have a look at this video. Aha, uh -huh. so here we have a different diagram, okay? Now in this diagram, remember, we're still going to use the left, uh, the right hand rule. So um, we're going to use, remember, your index finger. It represents your uh, direction of the magnetic field from north to south, right? Therefore, we have the current, the middle finger, it represents your current, and your thumb, it represents the direction of the coil. It will determine whether the coil will move clockwise or anti-clockwise, okay? So now, let us start, okay? Remember, this is you. You are sitting on a table like this, right? And then you have your right hand, uh, you have your right hand. So now let us use right hand rule to determine the direction of, and remember in exam you will always be provided with two and you have to figure one, okay? But because here we are doing explanation, well, I will, I will, do, I will do an example whereby we're going to give ourselves two and determine one. But for now let's just explain this, everything it is provided here, I'm just showing how, you, how it works. So now from north to south, remember we use the index finger, this is you sitting on the table. So you point from north to south. You're gonna break. You're gonna break hands, guys. You have to break those fingers. That's the easiest way to figure the directions. So that means you're gonna point from north to south. Okay, you point <laughs> from north to south. And then remember, we focus only on one side, right? So I'm gonna focus on side AP once more again. You can also choose this side, okay? Because you know that the current in this case, I provided the current to move from B. A. So that means this current, if it moves from B to A, it's going to travel like this, travel like this, and on this side, it's going to move from C to A. That's simple, okay? So that means this side of AB, the current is moving away from you because it's moving from B to A. It is no longer moving towards you. It's no longer moving towards your chest. It's moving away from your chest, okay? So that means you're gonna, your, your, your middle finger is going to point in that direction to the book, to the board. Or to the page okay or away from your chest okay right so that means this is my middle finger which is pointing into this page and therefore my uh remember remember my magnetic field is from north to south okay and therefore that means i'm going to unfold this i'm gonna have to unfold this and i'll make sure that these they act perpendicular to one another okay so that means the side of ap it is going to move upwards Okay, it's going to move upwards, magnetic field north to south, and the direction of the current is moving away from you, it's moving into the board or away from the chest. Okay, so that means the coil on this side of AB will rise up, and the coil on this side of CD will move downwards. So that means if coil moves upwards on the side of AB and downwards on the side of DC, what will be the rotation of the coil will be clockwise, like a clock, like a clock, okay, will be clockwise. That's how we determine the direction using the right hand rule. All right, <clears throat> again, this is um, an example on how to determine the direction of these three parameters, okay? Now, in this last uh, video that I'm going to share with you here, um, it's actually a problem solving. Okay, it's actually problem solving each and every time in exam. 
um, they're going to give you two. It's either they're going to give you the direction of the current and the direction of magnetic field. That means you're going to have to know how to determine the direction of the force of the coil. Or they will give you the force of the coil, they will give you the current, and they want you to determine magnetic field. Or they give you force of the coil, they give you magnetic field, and they want you to determine the direction of the current. Either way, okay, they can give you two, and they would ask you to determine one. That's how they ask these type of questions. So everything that I've just spoke about, everything that I've just showed you on this video, um, it's applicable. You can do anything, okay, with those videos. So let me show you the last video. Um, and then we are done. The last video is a problem solving. All right. So now here we have a problem. So we're gonna solve this problem. I'll try to tell you what's happening here if you're not uh if you if it's not clear, I'll try to explain what is happening here. Okay. So make sure that you know it, you know it down. So now where's my pen? Now um so now here this is what is happening. We are given the direction of the current. This is the direction of the current. I'll show you there on the diagram. We are also given the direction of the coil that this coil it is actually moving anti-clockwise okay meaning it's moving anti-clockwise okay and they want us to determine the pole b whether pole b it is north or it is south okay this is the problem guys so in order for us to solve this problem we are going to use the right hand rule so in order for us to use the right hand rule <clears throat> in order for us to use the right hand rule this is what we are going to do remember we are provided with two we need to figure out what which is the direction of the magnetic field now this is what is happening they said our current in this coil will move from d to c meaning we are going to focus on this side so the current is moving from d to c meaning it is moving away from you it's running away from you it's moving into the page okay so remember which finger did we use to represent the direction of the current? The middle finger, right? So meaning my middle finger will most check. I'm going to use all of the fingers, just that these fingers, I'm going to fold them, and then I'm going to start checking about the direction of the current, which is moving away, okay? It's moving into, into the page, into the board, okay? It's moving into, because it's moving away from you, from D to C. Now, what is also provided to us, it is the direction of the coil, that this coil, it is moving anti-clockwise. So remember, when the coil is moving anti-clockwise, let's talk about this side of uh, DC. When the coil is moving anti-clockwise, this side of DC will be moving upwards or downwards. If it moves upwards, it will rotate like this, right? This side of DC will come up and this side of AB will go down, meaning it will rotate like this. Right? If this side of CD it is moving downwards, meaning it will rotate like this, the side of DC will go up downwards and the side of AP will move upwards, meaning this is clockwise and this it is anti anti clockwise. So they say this coil it is moving anti clockwise, meaning this side of DC will come up and this one will go downwards. So that means for a fact that this side of DC will come up. Remember, our current is into the board, into the page, and then the direction of the coil will move upwards, meaning we're going to point upwards because the direction of the coil on this side will move upwards, meaning we point upwards with our thumb, okay? And therefore now, let us unfold. Remember, these are my fingers, right? So now let us unfold, let's unfold the index finger. If we unfold the index finger, we make sure that our index finger it's perpendicular to all of these fingers, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, okay? So if we unfold the index, index finger, we find out that now the magnetic field will move from this point to that point, meaning this is from north, this is to south, north, south. So meaning our index finger is pointing to south, from north to south, okay? So that means here we're going to have north, this side, uh, this bar of magnet is going to be north, and this bar, this side of the magnet is going to be south, okay? So that means they wanted us to determine pole B. So that means pole B will represent your North Pole. That means A will represent your South Pole. That's how we can determine this pole. Thank you for watching.
make sure that you leave your comments like subscribe and share thank you